Hello, welcome to Catfish Am Enterprise. You are welcome to our channel. So if you are new to this channel, hit on the subscribe button, go through the channel. We have a lot of videos we have done in the Catfish Farm business that can guide you. If you're a new farmer, if you're an existing farmer, this is the right place for you. So we have various videos that we have done that can guide you in the path for catfish farming. So we are looking at various topics in the catfish farm business and how to guide farmers to avoid a lot of mistakes they make in the catfish farm business today. Now we have seen a lot of persons that have started out in the catfish farm business today. Some are no longer in the catfish farming because of mistakes they have made, errors that they encountered in the catfish farm business. So we are here to guide you in catfish farming and give you the proper knowledge on what to do and how to scale up your business. So today we are looking at another topic in the catfish farm business. Now if you have not watched our last videos, do well to see the videos. So today we are looking at cannibalism in the catfish farm. Cannibalism in the catfish farm. Now cannibalism is a major challenge most farmers have complained about. Both the new farmers, both the existing farmers, they always complain about, okay, I'm having this issue, the issue of cannibalism in my farm. How am I going to sort it out? So firstly, we are going to be defining what cannibalism is and the major reasons why farmers experience cannibalism in their farm and also how to tackle this issue. So stay tuned. Mm. Yeah. back so we are looking at cannibalism so we are defining the term what is cannibalism now cannibalism is a is an art whereby some animals let's say fishes eat or consume the or another as food now whereby a fish consumes another one as food now that's cannibalism and a lot of persons have experienced this in their farm. It's a regular occurrence. If you're a fish farmer, you should notice this. Now, most times you will come and you see maybe wounds all over the body of some of your fishes. And, or maybe you just see the head of the fishes in your pond. So, it's a result of cannibalism. Now, there's a saying that fishes eat fishes to grow. Now, a lot of fishes, they eat fishes to grow. And cannibalism occurs highly in when the fishes are smaller. Because at this, this at that stage they want to eat. So once there is no food to eat, they prey on the other one. So most times, some of the sharp shooters or the jumpers some farmers experience in their farm are a result of cannibalism. They are a result of cannibalism. That you, see, you see some people they are have some fishes that are growing very fast. Now these are fishes that have eaten maybe or swallowed some other fishes. So it happens in so many farms, and there are. Three factors that that make cannibalism to happen speedily. Now we can't say we, we will reduce cannibalism to maybe zero level, but at least if all of these three factors are well taken care of, we won't be experiencing cannibalism as much as a lot of persons are experiencing it, or we might not even be experiencing it at all if all these factors are put into place. Now we are, we are going to be looking at the three factors and how to manage them properly. Now, I've gotten some messages a lot of persons have sent in. Now, someone sent in a message that says, okay, I stocked 16,000 juvenile in a pond. And after sorting, after the first month that we sorted out, we had like 11,000 something juvenile. So, almost 5,000 or thereabouts we are missing. So, he was asking how we are 5,000 missing in the space of one month. Now, remember, these are just juveniles. They are still at a small stage, going from juvenile to post to jumbo size so you won't you won't say it, it was theft because you say okay the place was well secured and it someone will not come and steal a juvenile is not yet ready to eat at that point so it's a major factor of the cannibalism that occurred in that farm also someone sent in a message that say okay i stocked 12,000 fishes now after a one month of sorting we noticed that around 500 we are very big now the remaining we are still very small, they were not growing, and we lost close to three thousand fishes. 
Now, look at the scenario there. They lost 3,000 fishes. They have some that we are growing faster, some that we are not growing at all. So this is a result of cannibalism. Now, the ones that we are growing faster, we are the ones that ate up the smaller fishes. And since they are big, now they are the ones battling for the food. So most majority of the food you pour in your pond are going for these bigger ones, while the smaller ones you are not eating. So it results to a huge variation in the sizes in your pond. Now you have those that are growing big, you have those that are growing very small in the pond. Because these ones that are big ate some of the fishes and it will continue like that. Before you know it, you just see that maybe the 10,000 fishes you are stuck, you don't have up to 50% of it in your pond. And this is a big, a huge loss for the farmer. So to avoid this, so we are looking at why cannibalism and how to avoid the cannibalism. So we are looking at the first point today, why cannibalism occur in farms. Now the first one is overstocking your pond. Overstocking your pond. Now a lot of persons, they get the fishes, now they don't really calculate the stocking capacity before they stock the pond. Or some they feel okay, the stocking capacity has to do only when the fishes have grown big. Maybe when they are one kg, they will not look at the stocking capacity. Now, from when they are still small, you should stock them with a stocking capacity. Not just because you see at their fingerlings, they are juvenile, and you put them into a single pond. Now the person that sent a message that he lost close to 5,000 juvenile. So when I asked, okay, how did you stock? So it was like he stuck the 16,000 in one pond, just in one pond. Although he had four different ponds. So he, his plan was, once they start growing, he starts separating them into the four different ponds. No. You separate them into their four different ponds. As they grow, you can either sort and rearrange their sizes, and rearrange them into different sizes. Stocking them into one pond is overstocking, even at that small stage, and it will result to cannibalism. So overstocking your pond results to cannibalism. At even at a small stage, don't overstock. Now, it's better you understock your pond than to overstock it. Now, in understocking your pond, they are, it even help the fishes to grow very well. They are free, they eat well. But if you overstock the pond, there is high competition in terms of feeding. Some will tend to eat and others won't eat. Now, the ones that we are not able to eat that time, they are hungry and they will prey on the other one, not considering the sizes. Now, a lot of persons feed with maybe only big fishes eat the smaller one. No. Most times, the smaller fishes, they gang up and eat the big one. So, it's not just a one-way thing. I say, okay, it's the big one that must eat the small one. Or you say, okay, I'm leaving the small ones inside the pond so that the big ones can eat them. No, you might come one day and surprisingly, you see that your big fishes, the smaller ones have gang up to eat them. Because one, the big fishes we are eating when we are introducing feed to them, while the smaller ones we are not eating. So they will in turn eat the big one. So overstocking your pond is one of the reasons a lot of farmers experience cannibalism in their farm. Now, as from the fingerling stage, don't overstock the pond. Give the stock according to the stock capacity. Or if you can't estimate the stock capacity, you rather understock the pond. You just know that this pond is understocked than it's being overstocked to avoid experiencing cannibalism in your farm. Now, how to limit the overstocking in your farm? I've said understock the pond. That's one of the reasons or one of the ways to avoid overstocking as an issue in cannibalism in the catfish farm business so make sure you use the appropriate size number of fishes per pond or if you can't really estimate that it's better or it's, a, it's safer to understock once you understock they don't really experience cannibalism and it's also good for the fishes that's why a lot of persons talked about the eating pond because most times the eating pond because of the large capacity of the pond is hardly you overstock at that pond so you already got get a maximum result in the pond now the second one we are looking at today that uh, brings for cannibalism we have looked at overstocking now the level is irregular feeding irregular feeding is one of is one of the factors that cause for cannibalism in the farm now, if someone don't eat, now our definition of cannibalism is say that fishes eat fishes. Now it happens both in mammals and different animals. Now, but we are looking at catfish as our case study. Now, cannibalism means that a fish will eat another fish as food. So if the fish is not hungry, it won't want to eat on the other one. So since yeah, we are not well fed, 
that's why you now start experiencing cannibalism because these fishes are not well fed so if they are well fed you don't really experience cannibalism in your farm so regularly feed your fishes regularly and adequately now a lot of persons they just come sprinkle feed in the farm and in five minutes they are off that's not how feeding is being done feeding should be done consciously you should understand the art and the technicality of feeding now a lot of persons feel cartilage farm is just all about getting a pond getting a fish buying your feed and pouring the feed inside the pond no there are a lot of techniques that goes into feeding alone a lot of techniques goes into feeding you must understand how to feed your fishes how to observe their feeding response how to observe if they are eating well or not to know whether they are feeding well and also even the temperature affects the feeding so you should all these things should be put into cognizance so that you don't just go to the farm and pour your feed and leave at least take at least 30 to 20, 20 to 30 minutes in feeding you 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 pour the feed you, you watch them and you introduce it gradually now why you do it gradually so you don't maybe overfeed them and they waste the feed for you so as you are giving them the feed they are eating and make sure that after you have fed them at least let there be some numbers of feed also in the pond not just maybe as you pour the food as you finish it you start going no allow some feed to be in the pond also so that the ones that we are slow to pick can come up and also eat so you feed you maybe you give them time let's say for a farm maybe you have different ponds you can feed the first pond a you move to pond b feed c d and before you get to the end and come back again now the ones in pond a you see that they have done eating you can now give them again to watch them as they eat so if they are fed regularly they don't have time to maybe prey on the other for food so at least you can now reduce the cannibalism so adequate regular feeding is essential and also quality feed now some persons don't just want to feed anything you can feed them chaff one that we are looking at is talking irregular sizes now that is the third issue a lot of farmers experience and this always happens for small farmers now maybe someone that maybe just have two ponds or just a, a pond now you know that you experience irregular sizes maybe you have some that are 300 grams 500 grams 200 grams post juvenile juvenile and let's say even finger lengths depending on what you are stocking from now you have these irregular sizes normally you should sort them to different sizes now due to maybe you just have one pond it's now an issue in terms of sorting so and you pack all into one pond so many issues you encounter is first of all the feeding size the size of the feed you are giving them at a particular time so you have issues of knowing what size to feed and also because they are irregular sizes they will start preying on themselves so to avoid that before you embark on the cartilage farm you should have pond that you sort them out and sort the fishes into their different sizes let them go into the different sizes no when they when they have a regular size in the pond they are well fed and they are not overstocked you will not experience cannibalism in your farm now at least it will be brought to the barest minimum you you should not be experiencing it as often as other persons experience in their farm so i've seen a lot of persons i've seen pictures online on facebook that people post and say ah what is happening to my fishes they are eating their safe and once you observe closely you see that most of these fishes are fishes that are of irregular sizes now imagine putting maybe two kg fish in a pond and let's say juvenile inside that pond the two kg fish will just swallow up all the juvenile so you see the irregular size is one of the major issues a lot of farmers face and if the first one is not tackled which is the overstocking now because you have stocked you, are, you, are, you start having irregular sizes because some will eat, some will not be able to eat. Now, since you have irregular sizes, the bigger ones will start eating the smaller ones, or the smaller ones start eating the bigger ones. So, these three factors must be put in place, not just one. Now, no matter the quality of the feed, no matter the quantity of the feed you are giving to your fishes, once they are overstocked, you, they must experience cannibalism. And also, no matter the quality of the feed you are giving them, once you have so many variations of sizes in your pond, you are set for cannibalism in that farm so all these three factors must be put in place to reduce the cannibalism in the farm now every farmer wants to make profit out of their business so losing your fishes from cannibalism and the worst case scenario some of them they will just maybe eat them small they won't finish them up that goes to waste so these are also increasing the cost of your production 
So you should take all the factors promptly and apply them to your farm. And I hope the cannibalism in your farm will not be that as much and it will reduce drastically. So thank you for joining us today. So hit on the subscribe button for those joining the channel new. You can like and share our videos to friends. Until next time.